However, the most profound of these conversations are the ones where Jibreel is giving advice to the Prophet ﷺ. Can you imagine getting access to that conversation? Sayyidul Malaika, the chief of the angels, gives advice to Sayyidu Waladi Adam, to the chief of mankind. Gives him advice. And subhanAllah, when you think about how profound that is, I mean, we're, we're blessed to have access to those conversations because it's advice for all of us. And Jibreel gives advice to the Prophet ﷺ? Yes, he does. In fact, the Prophet ﷺ was seen going to his neighbor's house, the Jewish neighbor by the way, over and over and over again, taking them things, serving them. And the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, we noticed that all of a sudden, you keep going to your neighbor's house. He said, Hada Jibreel. Yusini bil jar. Jibreel was coming to me and advising me, take care of your neighbor, take care of your neighbor, hatta wanantu annahu sayyawarrithu. Until I thought Jibreel was gonna say, now you assign inheritance to him. So Jibreel kept coming to me and saying, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, go to your neighbor, take care of your neighbor. You know, subhanAllah, serve your neighbor. And this is beautiful, because that's a cornerstone of every religion, right? Love thy neighbor, right? This is a part of our faith as well. That Jibreel, that's what he says to him over and over and over again. The Prophet ﷺ also was once seen saying, Ameen, Ameen, Ameen. And Sahaba said, Ya Rasulullah, why are you saying Ameen? He said, well, Jibreel was making dua. And Jibreel made dua against three people. The one whose parents reach old age, and he doesn't honor them. Jibreel said, Rahima anfu. You know, SubhanAllah, Jibreel Islam made dua against that person, may be humiliated. The second person, the one who Ramadan comes and goes, and he's not forgiven by his Creator. It's such a merciful month, it's a month of mercy. How can Ramadan come upon you and leave you, and you're not forgiven by your Lord? The third one, the one who hears the name of Rasulullah sallallahu alayhi wasallam and doesn't say sallallahu alayhi wasallam. Jibreel Islam found that offensive. But what's it like when Jibreel decides to tell the Prophet ﷺ something, when he gives him life advice? Now this narration that I'm about to share with you, is towards the end of the life of the Prophet ﷺ. We know that because of the age of the Sahaba that narrated it. They were young children that narrated this narration. It happens when the Prophet ﷺ now is established, he's successful, everything is done, right? رَأَيْتَ النَّاسَ يَدْخُلُونَ فِي دِينِ اللَّهِ أَفْوَاجَ People are coming into the religion and throng, everything is, is done. Jibreel comes to the Prophet ﷺ and he says, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad. Now by the way, does Allah ever say to the Prophet ﷺ, Ya Muhammad in the Qur'an? No. Ya Nabi Allah, Ya Rasulullah, O Prophet of God, O Messenger of God. So why is it that Jibreel has the audacity to say, Ya Muhammad? In fact, the scholars say when Jibreel says, Ya Muhammad, he's telling the Prophet ﷺ, this is outside of the capacity of revelation. What I'm about to say to you is from me Jibreel to you Muhammad. So that's the only time he doesn't say, Ya Rasulullah, is when I want to tell you something just between me and you now. Okay? So he says, Ya Muhammad, five advices here. Ish ma shi't fa innaka mayyit. Live as you will, but know that one day you're going to die. One day you're going to die. He says, Wahbib ma shi't fa innaka mufariqu. Love whom you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. So the first ones, don't get attached to this, this world. Your purpose lies beyond this world. Don't get attached to people of this world. Because eventually they will leave you and you will leave them. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌّ بِهِ Do as you will and know that you will be compensated and rewarded accordingly. The compensation is in the hereafter. Meaning what? Everything comes in the hereafter. All the reward comes in the hereafter. Keep doing what you do and know that the reward is in the hereafter. So the first one, عِشْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَيَّتْ Live as you will, but know that one day you're going to die. وَحْبِبْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مُفَارِقُ Love who you will, but know that one day you will be separated from that person. وَعْمَلْ مَا شِئْتْ فَإِنَّكَ مَجْزِيٌّ بِهِ Do as you will, and know that one day you will be rewarded accordingly. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ Know that the nobility of the believer is his standing up in prayer at night. It's not in being a ruler, it's not in having thousands of followers, it's not in being a king, it's not in having this or having that. The nobility of a person comes from his standing up in prayer at night, invoking his Lord. وَعْلَمْ أَنَّ شَرَفَ الْمُؤْمِنْ قِيَامُهُ بِاللَّيْلِ وَعِزَّهُ And as for his dignity, اِسْتِغْنَاؤُهُ عَنِ النَّاسِ It's his being independent of people. Financially, emotionally, mentally, physically, your izza, your dignity as a person is try not to be dependent on people. Try to absolve yourself of needing people in any way whatsoever. 
That's profound life advice right there. SubhanAllah, that's something that we can all take to ourselves. Now the next incident I'll share with you is actually Jibreel giving advice in a very subtle way, but it's profound advice as well. This narration that I'm about to share with you is so profound. Al-Hafid ibn Rajab rahimahullah in his famous book, Al-Khushu' fi salah Humility and Prayer, the last chapter is just about this hadith, even though it has nothing to do with prayer, because of what it means. The Prophet ﷺ, he says in authentic hadith, that I was sitting with Jibreel alayhi salam. فَإِذَا شَقَّ أُفُقُ السَّمَاءِ And then all of a sudden the sky split, وَنَزَلَ مَلَكَ And an angel came down. فَأَقْبَلَ إِلَيْنَا And he started to come close to us. Now you want to know what makes this narration so strange? Rasulullah ﷺ says, فَلَمَّا رَآهُ جِبْرِيلِ تَسَاغَرْ When Jibreel saw this angel, he became smaller, he held himself. The ulama say tasaghar, he held himself, like bracing for something. The angel came to the Prophet ﷺ and said, Ya Rasulullah, O Messenger of Allah, inni Rasulullah ilayk. I'm a messenger that's been sent to you from God. Ukhayiruka. I'm giving you a choice. Bayna an takuna. Nabiyan abda aw nabiyan malika. I'm here to give you a choice. Either you live, you're a prophet who lives like a king or a prophet that lives like a humble slave. Who can give me an example of nabiyan malika? A prophet that lives like a king. Sulaiman alayhi salam, Dawood alayhi salam, and Nabi and Malika means that you'll live comfortable. Look, you can have a great life, live very comfortably, be a king, have the riches of this world, do whatever you want, and you'll still have the hereafter. It's not going to decrease from you in any way whatsoever. So you can either be that, or you can continue to live like a humble slave. I mean, the Prophet ﷺ used to go nights in hunger, stones tied to his stomach. He suffered from poverty at the very worst, even after success, right? So you have a choice now. So the Prophet ﷺ said, فَنَظَرْتُ إِلَى جِبْرِيلِ I looked at Jibreel. He said, فَأَشَارَ إِلَيَّ أَنْ تَوَاضَعُ Jibreel did this. So the Prophet ﷺ said, I said to him, بَلْ نَبِيًا عَبْدًا I'll choose to be a prophet that lives like a humble slave. So the angel left. So I looked at Jibreel salam. This was very strange. Jibreel alayhi salam said, هَذَا الْمَلَكِ This angel, لَمْ يَنزِلْ قَبْلَ الْيَوْمِ He's never been down before this day. So the Prophet ﷺ says, فَمَا بَالُكَ تَسَغَرْتْ Why is it that you got smaller and, and, and we're afraid? He said, وَاللَّهِ مَا ظَنَنْتُهُ نَزَلَ إِلَّا بِقِيَامِ السَّاعَةِ So I swear by Allah, I didn't think that he came except to announce the Day of Judgment. Who was that angel? Israfil. When Jibreel saw Israfil come down, he thought it was all over. So Jibreel even became afraid at the sight of Israfil. And Ibn Rajab rahimahullah, the, he ends his book, with Bal Nabi and Abda, choose to be a humble servant. And how did this affect the Prophet ﷺ physically as well? I mean, obviously, he continued to live in very humble means. The Prophet ﷺ, when he used to eat his food, sometimes he'd lay back, recline, and eat. But after that incident, the Prophet ﷺ would only eat his food sitting up. So the Sahaba asked him, Ya Rasulullah, why is it that you only eat your food sitting up? He said, because this is more befitting for Nabi and Abda, for a Prophet that will live like a humble slave. So it affected the Prophet ﷺ. That incident actually affected the Prophet ﷺ. And you know what I think about this, 23 years before this incident, how traumatized was the Prophet ﷺ by the side of Jibreel? And he didn't even know who Allah was or what Allah wanted from him. Iqra bismi rabbika ladhi khalaq. In just 23 years, the most beloved sight to the Prophet ﷺ was seeing Jibreel ﷺ. And Jibreel alayhi salam said to the Prophet ﷺ, the one who gave him all those advices we talked about, he said to him, look, I'm here to give you a choice. Either you can choose to remain amongst your companions and live well, or you can have the companionship of the Most High, Al-A'la, Allah. Jibreel alayhi salam, when he said that, the Prophet ﷺ responded, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Bal al-Rafiq al-A'la, Allahumma al-Rafiq al-A'la, Oh Allah, the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. I want the companionship of the Most High. Aisha radiallahu anha, she says that the Prophet ﷺ's soul left his body as he was saying, Ar-Rafiq al-A'la, the Most High, the companionship of the Most High. His hand fell and the Prophet ﷺ died. Aisha radiallahu anha, when that happened, she screamed. And everyone, when they heard the scream of Aisha, they knew that, they knew that the Prophet ﷺ passed away. Fatima radiallahu anha, she was sitting in the hijr, she was sitting in the, the room next door. And when she heard that, she authored some, she said some of the most beautiful words. She knew that she was about to die as well, by the way. And subhanAllah, the prophecy was fulfilled because Fatima got sick four months later and died out of nowhere. Fatima radiallahu anha, when she heard Aisha scream, she looked up and she said, Ya abata, min rabbihi ma adna. 
O oh my dear Father, how close you are now to your Lord. Ya abata ila Jibreel an O oh my dear Father, to Jibreel we announce your death. Ya abata jannatul firdawsi ma'wa. O oh my dear Father, paradise is now your abode. And she recited it over and over and over again. That how close you are now to Allah. To Jibreel we announce that you've departed. And Jannatul Firdaus is now your place.